Hey your friends, it's Charles here, and today we're going to talk about Catwoman number 69. I enjoyed it. This, though, is more of a reset in the story of Catwoman, which has been, you know, pretty consistent, you know, um, since I've been on. I've been reading since about issue 20 around that area. And, um, you know, from there, she moved back to Gotham, reestablished herself in Alleytown and reclaimed that territory and built a lot of relationships, you know, the closest being, you know, unexpected ones like Dario, the uh, black sheep son of a crime boss who had uh, become her kind of official, unofficial sidekick, and Eiko Hasegawa, a crime boss who moonlighted as a Catwoman as a proxy for Selena as she went out of town during the Nine Lives story arc and uh, the fallout from the Gotham Wars and what happened with uh, the Lazarus Pit storyline. Um, you know, so the fallout from that and, you know, she, she uh, from the explosion of the Lazarus Pit, she uh, became somewhat immortal and realized she had nine lives, literally. And so she used those in a series of jobs and quests that she knew would get her killed. Very interesting story arc, and this is the end of it. Um, you know, she she has been freed of that Lazarus, uh, that piece of la you know, the piece of the explosion that was stuck in her head that was giving her this semi uh, immortality, but it was also killing her. And so it was a risky surgery with that, as well as the final battle of all of these enemies who she had built in that Nine Life storyline coming together to destroy her. Um, it was a big, big, exciting last two issues, uh, 67-68. And um, this is a complete reset. We start with her recovering um, and an apartment, a safe house. She has a wound that you don't know anything about, and it is presumably a time jump. Um, as you, as you, uh, read on, you know, there is no Dario, there is no Echo, there is no Catwoman. It is just her, and, you know, there are cops outside, and she is, you know, trying to figure out how to dodge them. Uh, one of her alias alias names. Somebody has shared that name with her, been murdered. And so you know that you're jumping into something that has been going on. And they give you a lot of information, not so much uh, hand-fistedly. You know, they, they tell it through her kind of mind's eye. And you jump back to the night before... And here she is, you know, in a big event with a chairman of some sorts. And I'm not going to get into any more spoilers of it, but things go awry. Um, and she is mixed up in a whole new thing. It seems, Like I said, it seems to be a big time jump that has happened and a big tonal switch. Um, this is a lot darker. And when I say darker, I don't just mean as far as the tone. But as far as the art as well, and, uh, you know, there, there, there's not too much brightness, too much cartoony action. You know, the biggest action piece would probably be this fight in her apartment, you know, and the brightest you have is that dirty yellow. And so the tone is very dark, both in the writing and visually as well. Um... It kind of threw me off a little bit. I wasn't expecting the tonal, the tonal shift, but I'm along for the ride, and I enjoyed it, and I'm intrigued by this new story. And it looks like this story is going to be taking her away from Gotham, away from Alley Town again. So it's going to be, you know, this was just kind of, you know, uh, letting us know we're heading in a whole new direction and a reset. It really honestly could have been a number one to a new series. But, you know, like I said, regardless, I'm buying it. I love Catwoman. 
And I'm excited to see where this goes. And we still don't know who is behind all of this, all of this trouble that is uh, on her doorstep. And uh, as I finished the book, I had another nice surprise. Um, they had another AEW mini comic. Um, last one I saw was in Batman 153. They had a little mini comic of the former AEW champion Swerve Strickland. And this one features Will Ospreay, a British wrestler who became a legend over in Japan, now signed with All Elite Wrestling. And you have a fictional backstory of how he honed his skills and became a protector somewhat of uh, the downtrodden. But, I, you know, he refused to kill, so he took his skills to the wrestling ring. And the thing I like is, you know, it's a very, very short story. It takes all the three pages, but it looks like Will Ospreay. It reads, like, how he talks. And it's cool to see, you know, somebody that I enjoy from one nerdy medium wrestling and another nerdy medium and comic books, and that is the cool thing about, you know, um, all elite wrestling and the Warner Brothers relationship, uh, you know, Warner, Warner Brothers, they're working with DC, you know, and you have all of that stuff up on the Max app, AEW Wrestling is going to be on the Max app starting next year, and so I'm hoping to see more crossovers between my comic books and my wrestling uh, I really dig it. Like I said, I'm excited to get on. If you like Catwoman, but you've been lost and wondering when is a good place to start reading, this is it. Number 69 it is a new beginning to a brand new story arc. Um, I like the fact that they had a conclusive end to the last arc. Um, I, I personally wanted to see what was going to happen directly after. But you know, I can't complain with what they've given me. Anyway, you guys, be easy, keep reading them books, and I'll see you next time.